Right, okay, so now it's time to work out the bending moment diagram. And since we know what the shear force diagram looks like, it's relatively, relatively straightforward to work out the bending moment diagram. So we have to summarize, what do we know? What do we know about the bending moment diagram? So let us, in fact, before we summarize what we know, let's just create a little bit of space for ourselves here to draw the bending moment diagram. The bending moment diagram is going to be a series of curves. How do I know that? Well, because the shear force diagram is made up of a series of inclined straight lines, well, that means the bending moment diagram is going to be a series of polynomials, a series of curved lines. And we know that because of because of this relationship here, because of that guy there. So if this value here is constantly changing, that means the slope of the bending moment diagram is constantly changing and therefore it's a curve, okay? The other thing we know is, we know where the shear force is zero, we've worked that out and that tells us where the bending moment is a maximum, so that's handy as well. We know that we've got two pinned ends, we've got a pin here at point A and a pin over the far end over here, I think we called that point B. We know the bending moment is gonna be zero at a pin, Okay, and we also know we have a point load coming on here and a point load leads to a sudden change in the slope of a bending moment diagram. So these are the key points. So with all that, I can sketch out, I can sketch out what this bending moment diagram might be. So I know it's got a local maximum here, okay? And I know it's gonna be a series of curves. So it's gonna curve, I'm just gonna draw a curve on here, coming down to a local maximum here. And then it's going to curve again here, but then I'm gonna to get to this point where the point load comes on and the slope is gonna change. So I'm gonna have another curve, but it's gonna be it's gonna be abrupt an abrupt change in the slope, a step change in the slope at that point. Now don't forget, you can at any point, if you're not sure what way this is looking or what way you should start sketching this out, you can always just go straight in and start taking cuts at various different points in this structure. So that is still a perfectly valid way to approach this. Intuitively, I can look at the shear force diagram and I can say based on the shape of that shear force diagram, the Benny Wong diagram is gonna be a curve, it's gonna have a local maximum here. And based on that then, I'm able to work out, if or rather, if I take a cut, at this location here, I can work out the value of M max, and then I can take another cut here to work out the value of, let's just call that MP for where the point load P comes on. And practically speaking, practically speaking, I, if I know that number and that number, I've determined all of the salient points of my bending moment diagram. Sure enough, I, I, I don't, or I haven't worked out an equation to describe, I haven't worked out an equation to describe this curve. I could do that by just taking a cut in the structure at that point. But for all practical purposes, I don't need to know what that curve is, or I don't need to know the equation that describes that curve. All, all I'm really interested in is, well, what's the maximum value of the bending moment? Where does it occur? Oh, and also what's the value over here? I don't even really need to know that value necessarily. The key value here is the maximum value, but I'll work this out just because it's relatively straightforward. So all we have to do now is take a couple of cuts. We're going to cut at the point where the maximum moment occurs. So that's the first cut we'll do. So let me just sketch this thing out. All right then, so taking moments about the cut, so what do we have here? We've got a minus M max plus 81.32 times 7.82 meters minus five kilonewtons per meter times five meters over which it acts times a lever arm of 5.32 meters minus 20 kilonewtons per meter times 2.82 meters times 2.82 over two, which is lever arm. And that equals zero. And when we solve all of that for M max, we get the value of M max equal to four, two, three point four kilonewton meters. Okay, as an engineer looking at this, that's the key value I'm interested in. I want to make sure that whatever I make or whatever I design this beam out of, whatever material I design the beam out of, it is able to withstand the bending stresses or the normal stresses that arise due to bending that would arise with a bending moment of 423.4 kilonewton meters. So that's the that's the key thing. But to complete the, the question, just to finish this thing off, I'm gonna work out what MP is by taking a second cut. 
So this is a much shorter one, much smaller substructure to analyze. Okay, so let's again take the sum of the moments about the cut. So we have MP minus the 98.67 by 3 meters plus 3 by 3 by a lever arm of 1.5 equals 0. And we can solve all of that to get MP equal to 2, 82.5 kilonewton meters. Okay, so we've worked out the two moments that we wanted to work out which practically speaking is enough to define that bending moment diagram or to define the critical points in the bending moment diagrams would be a better way of saying it. Okay, take a quick break and in the next video what I want to do is come back and I want to determine an equation to describe the bending moment between C and D. Let me go back up to the top here. Right, so I want to define an equation to describe the bending moment between C and and D, and then I want to differentiate that equation to identify the location of the maximum bending moment and confirm for ourselves through a different method that the bending moment, the max bending moment is indeed 423.4. So instead of looking at where the shear force is zero there and just evaluating the bending moment at that point, let's try and determine the equation for bending moment, differentiate that, let that equal to zero to find the location of the max, and again, evaluate the max moment. So just a little, not essential, but just a little, a little bit of practice for us really. So as I say, take a quick break and we'll come back in the next video and work that out.